Thank you so much for watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. I was praying about our time together and God dropped a verse in my heart. Honestly, it's one of my favorite verses and it's 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9 and 10. And it says, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. And I just want to encourage you today that God has prepared some amazing things for you. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and mighty things that you don't know. God has awesome, awesome things for you. Don't be discouraged by your situations or circumstances. Sometimes we get discouraged even when we think about our own shortfalls and our own deficiencies. But God is bigger than all those things. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you. And I know that God has amazing answers for you. And he always encourages me with this. God has more answers than I have questions. God has more provision than I have need. God has more anointing <laughs> than I have flesh. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. And mom, I'm so excited about this teaching because this, you did this teaching at Joseph Prince, Pastor Joseph Prince's church. Yes, and I love this because it really, you're looking at Jesus. And that's so important because as we behold him, we're transformed into his image. Now watch it. We like the glory. We go from glory to glory by beholding him. So when I taught this at New Creation, you know, this church is outstanding and their hunger for the Word. And I've known Joseph Prince probably for 18 years and he's been a blessing in my life. So it was a blessing to get to teach the Word of God there and see people changed and transformed. Now, as you watch this teaching, you will see it's very important that you behold Jesus and you get hold of the word in your heart. So it really is where you live and it shows you the gospels and why there are four gospels. Why couldn't God have just kind of put it all in one, maybe in Mark or something, but each gospel gives a different revelation of Jesus. But it's not only that we see him, but we see him in us. So. All of these things that you see in the four Gospels is who Jesus is in you if you are born again. So as you watch, let the Holy Spirit really talk to you and reveal Jesus to you. And let this be a day when you go from glory to glory because when you behold Jesus, that's what he wants. He wants transformation. And that's what Sarah really brought to us. Always he wants to transform in every level of your life. Oh, you will love this today and feel free to call in for prayer at any moment. We love it and love to hear from you. Now, this is very exciting for me to get to do this. And, you know, I talked to your pastor about this and given it to him, but I like to see people see Jesus in every book of the Bible because as we behold him, we are changed into his image and we go from glory to glory. Now, a very interesting thing in Psalms 51, 6, it says, thou God desirest truth in the inward man and in the hidden man, you will make me to know wisdom. So what is truth? Truth is your Bible. Say truth is my Bible, right? Now, where does God want to see it? Not just on your coffee table, not just on the seat of your car, or in your briefcase or your purse. He wants to see truth in here. Amen? So when we read the Bible, what are we doing? We are putting truth in here. Now, Psalms 51, 6 says God's looking for truth in your inward man. So every time I read the Bible, oh, I'm putting truth inside. Then he says he will take that truth and make it wisdom up here. So hold up your phone or your Bible. <laughs> Say truth. As I read the truth, it comes in here. But now the Holy Spirit takes that truth and makes it wisdom up here. So do this. Say truth in here is wisdom up here. No truth here, no wisdom here. So it's very important. Now, when I look at truth, it's Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. 
And I have a passion for people to see that Jesus is in every book of the, of the Bible. So, you know, when I put this together, I did this 30 years ago. This is not just a little book you read. This is a research book. I mean, you, you can use this every day of your life from now on. And I show you who Jesus is in each book of the Bible. And as you behold him, looking at him, it is just awesome. Now the Bible, basically, Old Testament breaks into four segments. So when we look at Old Testament, we look at the Pentateuch. Everybody say Pentateuch. And then we look at the history books. So what is the Pentateuch? Can you tell me? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Is Jesus in each of those books? Genesis, and I put a picture in the book, he is the seed of the woman. So we see he's the virgin born one. And we see him in other places there too, and I show that. But then when I go to Exodus, oh, he's the Passover lamb. How can you understand 1 Corinthians 11 if you don't know the Passover lamb? Amen? He's the lamb of God. Revelation full of the lamb of God. Then when I go to Leviticus, and most people don't like to read Leviticus. I don't. <laughs> You know, I read through the Bible every year, and I want the Bible to read me. And so when I get to Leviticus, I think, hurry and get through Leviticus. But if you can see Jesus in Leviticus, he's the high priest in Hebrews. And so you begin to see, wow, he's my great high priest. Then when I go to Numbers, you know, he's the pillar of cloud that leads me by day. He's the pillar of fire that leads me by night. And he leads me. He loves me. And this is something to me. One time I was in another country. Uh, and this country, I was having a big meeting. And they said, uh, we, you can't do it here. They said, 34 suicide bombers have taken an oath to blow up the stadium and to kill you. But, you know, when you have Jesus inside you, he's greater than he that's on the outside. Now, listen closely. So, you know, I just said, Lord, and at that time I was memorizing the gospel of John. You know, I started going over those scriptures because at first I was really afraid. And then I just had great peace about it. You know, that word brings peace to your heart. And so I'm going over the scriptures and I said, we are not going to leave and close the meeting down because the game is not over till I win. And this is the Bible. Thanks be to God who always leads us to triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So they said, okay. So there was one Catholic church there. They said, you can use our football field. And so we had the meeting. We had over 30,000 people every night and nobody killed me. I'm here. <laughs> Why? The pillar of cloud, the pillar of death, uh, fire that he leads us by. And so then when we go to Deuteronomy, and Deuteronomy is basically just three sermons. And who is it? It's Jesus as the word. The word is emphasized. You know, people say to me, when are you going to retire? I say, I am retired. Oh, but you're busy. You're traveling all the time. I said, I know. I said, retirement is doing what you like. I'm doing what I like. I'm in Singapore. <laughs> and so we have the word that gives us life. And Proverbs 4.21 says his words are spirit and life. And so his word gives you life. Then, of course, when we go to the next segment, we see in the Old Testament the history books. So we see Joshua. Oh, Jesus is beautiful in Joshua. And the miracles of Joshua are something else. And he's the captain of the army. Look for Jesus, because it's awesome. That's such a miracle book. Then we go to Judges, and we say, oh, Judges, it's kind of doom and gloom. But oh, in the Jesus encounter, you will see wonderful five special anointings of the Holy Spirit. You think all the charismatics are in Singapore? No, they were in Judges too. And so 
we look and we see how the Holy Spirit was moving, the Spirit of Jesus Christ moving. Then when you go to Ruth, and I have heard Pastor Prince teach on Ruth, and it is just out of this world, because we see the kinsman redeemer, that Jesus as our kinsman came in the flesh and redeemed us. Discover Jesus in every book of the Bible. Every book of the Bible holds a revealing and faith-building glimpse of Jesus. Even the arrangement of the Bible's books reveals wonderful truths about Jesus. For your gift of $29 or more, we will send you the Seeing Jesus Bible Encounter Study Guide. In this over 500-page resource, you will see how the Old Testament was written to prepare the way for the Redeemer, and the purpose of the New Testament was to prepare the people to receive the Redeemer. We will also send you the Seeing Jesus 3 CD set, which includes four powerful teachings that will enhance your Bible study experience. See Jesus as the seed in Genesis, as the restorer and rebuilder in Nehemiah, as the sanctifier in 1 Corinthians, and the King of Kings in Revelation. Walk with Marilyn from Genesis to Revelation. See Jesus in every book of the Bible in this treasure house resource of spiritual knowledge. Call or click to get yours today. May 4th to the 13th as they minister on the Seeing Jesus in Argentina and Uruguay group tour. Travelers will minister with Marilyn and Sarah at Iglesia Rey de Rias Church in Buenos Aires. Participate in humanitarian outreach. Visit Plaza de Mayo and Palacio del Congreso. Take a ferry to Uruguay for a day tour of Colonia, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and visit a gaucho ranch for the day. For more information, visit MarilynAndSarah.org. So we begin to look at these history books, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, and we see the kings, and those are important to us. We need to know that Jesus has been throughout history. Amen? And I will show you that. You will love it. But then the next segment of the breakdown are the wisdom books. Now, nobody wants to be stupid. I mean, I don't care who you talk to. They don't say, I'd love to be stupid. They want to be wise. And so we love the wisdom books. And Jesus is in every wisdom book. Job is considered a wisdom book. It was written to be a play. And Job said, I know my Redeemer lives and that I'll see him on this earth. Job knew about resurrection. And then when you go to Psalms, ah, oh, Psalms is actually arranged like the Pentateuch. So if you wanted a psalm on the sovereignty of God, you'd go to one of the first 42 psalms, those are Genesis psalms. Well, I just want a psalm about who Jesus is, the Lamb of God. Well, you would go to the next grouping of psalms. So you would know, and you'll know that in your study guide, which psalm you need for which occasion. There were Levitical Psalms, Psalms that just showed his priesthood to us. There were Psalms that rehearsed their history. Look at Psalm 119. It's a Psalm that is on the Word. So the last grouping of Psalms are Deuteronomy Psalms. Is that cool? And then we have the prophets. So I, I'm going to look at this balcony right here, and I want you to say Pentateuch. That's kind of weak. <laughs> Could you say it louder? That's better. Then I want to look at the top balcony, and I want you to say history. history. You're good. 
Then I want this grouping back here. I want you to say wisdom. But then the last grouping, four groupings, are the prophets. And most Christians don't read the prophets. They're profitless. And Jesus, oh, Jesus is so wonderful in the prophets. You say, Isaiah 53. But honey, he's in Ezekiel and Jeremiah and Daniel and Obadiah. He is in the prophets. And I have a special chart that shows how the prophets prophesied to the kings. And there were always at least two prophets because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, everything is established. Amen. So we want to see Jesus in every prophet, even that little tiny prophet of Obadiah. He's there. He's there. Amen. So that's the four parts uh, breakdown of Old Testament. So put your hand on your heart. You say, are you a school teacher? Yes. Say, so I will never forget the Old Testament breaks into four parts. The Pentateuch, history, wisdom, prophets. So if you know where you're going, you know when you get there. But all the time you're looking for Jesus. Now, New Testament also. And as I said, this is a book you'll use all your life. It's a study book. New Testament has four-part breakdown also. It has the Gospels. And I'm going to have the very top say Gospel. Aren't they good? And then after the Gospels, we have Acts. So would you say Acts? And so that's like history, the history of the church after the resurrection of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit. But then we have the epistles. So would you say epistles? And then we have revelation. Oh, you're so good. Now, in here, oh, I have an easy outline of revelation. Even a six-year-old child can understand it. You say, well, how do you know you're right? Okay, because everybody writes something different about revelation. Well, the Lord told me to memorize it some years ago. It took me three years. I got discouraged, gave up, repented, picked it up, and finished it. So you say, who's right? I am. <laughs> so put your hand on your heart. Say, I won't forget. The New Testament has four segments. Now, what are they? Gospels, Acts, Epistles, Revelation. Amen. So this morning, I want to really look at who Jesus is inside you. And the Gospels show us that so beautifully. So I've asked Pastor if he would have four people come and stand with me. Because if you see it, I think it has a better opportunity of getting into your heart. So could I have those four people? Good. Good, 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 good. Now, when I first began to read the Bible... You know, I read four Gospels. I thought, why are there four? Why isn't there just one? It all sounds alike, you know. But the more you read the Bible, these Gospels are not alike. They are different. And they are who Jesus Christ is in us. And is Christ in us the hope of glory? And so what's inside me? What can I expect? And the Gospels show me what I can expect as a Christian and what you can expect as a born-again Christian. Now, the first gospel, if you would stand and face this way for me. Can you come up here in the light? Yeah, that's good. And face that way. Okay, good. The first gospel is Matthew. Everybody say Matthew. Matthew. Now, in Ezekiel and in Revelation, it shows a four-faced creature. And this creature has the face of a man the face of a lion, and if you would come and stand where I'm standing, yeah, because we're going to make a square. No, face this wall. Thank you. Okay, move a little further. That's great. Then you have the gospel of Mark, right? And this is another face of who Jesus is in you, inside you. And then we have the face of John, which is an eagle. Would you come and stand right here and face the back? That's perfect. 
and then would you come and face the front? And this is the Gospel of Luke. Now, these four faces of Jesus are who Jesus is inside you. So when I look at Matthew, oh, I get so excited over Matthew because it shows the authority that we have. He's a lion. Everybody say, grr. And you know, when you first get born again, you begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, you're astounded at some of the things that he does. Amen? I know one time I called a woman in California, and the Lord told me to call this woman. I didn't know her that well, but I had her phone number. And so when I called her, she said to me, uh, who is this? I said, this is Marilyn Hickey. She said, I can't believe you're calling me. I said, why? She said, because my face is paralyzed. And I said, Lord, if you want to heal me, have Marilyn Hickey call me today. <laughs> Ooh. And so I was so touched by her, you know, prayed with her on the phone. But eight months later, I saw her. She lived in California, and I was going out there to speak. And so she met me, and she said, I said, well, are you Denise, really? I said, your face is not paralyzed. She said, I know. It never has been paralyzed since you prayed. That's the lion. Everybody say, girl. And we can take his name and take authority. And I love this. When I watch the news, I don't just watch the news. I change it. Because we can take authority over what the devil's doing in the world. And we can ask for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm astounded at China. You know, I've been going, I've been in China 33 times. I started going into China in 89. And look at China. Today, in, I'm talking secular magazines, they say there are more Christians in China than communists. What happened? That underground church was a lion. Everybody say, girl. And the three self church is a lion too. Say, girl. And China has more Christians in it than any place in the world. Grr! That church under communism knew how to take authority. And they used his name. This is a crazy thing. I don't know if this would work here. Can you send a message on your phone to heal somebody? Is there, do you have a friend that you could text right now and say, I'm going to send the word to you and heal you? Would you like to do that? Do you have friends that are sick? Could we send the word to them this morning and they could be healed? Okay, this is what I want you to say. You say, you have the craziest faith. I know it. I've been hanging around your pastor. <laughs> okay, now listen to this. Just say to that person, I know you are sick and I'm sending the word to heal you. Just do it. Take your phone out. What can it hurt? Somebody gets healed, they get saved. They get a miracle. So we get miracles in the service, we get miracles that we send out of the service. Are you ready? You say, this crazy 83-year-old woman, we're sending miracles out of this service. Did you put it down? I'm sending a miracle of healing to you. Okay. Got it done? I know you have to put it in Chinese. I don't know how to write in Chinese, so it may not be as fast as English. So you send it? You ready? Okay, take your phone, put it on your heart. Say, Father, say it out loud. In the name of Jesus, I'm sending the word that heals and delivers this person from Satan. In Jesus' name, the lion is working. Amen. Amen. So we believe in Jesus' name. They are receiving healing from out of here. People get healed, get a miracle. They don't treat it lightly. They could be here next Sunday and receive Jesus. Amen. Discover Jesus in every book of the Bible. Every book of the Bible holds a revealing and faith-building glimpse of Jesus. Even the arrangement of the Bible's books reveals wonderful truths about Jesus. For your gift of $29 or more, we will send you the Seeing Jesus Bible Encounter Study Guide. 
In this over 500 page resource, you will see how the Old Testament was written to prepare the way for the Redeemer, and the purpose of the New Testament was to prepare the people to receive the Redeemer. We will also send you the Seeing Jesus 3 CD set, which includes four powerful teachings that will enhance your Bible study experience. See Jesus as the seed in Genesis, as the restorer and rebuilder in Nehemiah, as the sanctifier in 1 Corinthians, and the King of Kings in Revelation. Walk with Marilyn from Genesis to Revelation. See Jesus in every book of the Bible in this treasure house resource of spiritual knowledge. Call or click to get yours today. Join Marilyn and Sarah May 4th to the 13th as they minister on the Seeing Jesus in Argentina and Uruguay group tour. Travelers will minister with Marilyn and Sarah at Iglesia Rey de Rias Church in Buenos Aires. Participate in humanitarian outreach. Visit Plaza de Mayo and Palacio del Congreso. Take a ferry to Uruguay for a day tour of Colonia, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and visit a gaucho ranch for the day. For more information, visit MarilynAndSarah.org. Did you ever feel like you needed a built-in repair job? You know, you say, you know, I got so many problems inside, so many problems in my head, you know, so many problems physically. Oh, if I just had something inside to help me. Well, I have such good news for you. You can have a built-in repair shop in you because Jesus Christ, when he comes into your heart, he is the hope of glory. Now you may say, well, I know about him. I know the name, but do you have him? Because I knew about him. I went to church and I heard about Jesus. I knew stories about Jesus, but I didn't know I could invite him to come into my heart and he would come in and never leave me. So when I was 16 years old, I heard a Baptist minister say, you can have Jesus in you. You can have Christ in you, the hope of glory. And he told us how to do it. And so we repented of our sins. We believe that Jesus died for us and shed his blood and arose from the dead. We invited him to come in and be Lord of our lives. And let me tell you, I was 16. I'm now 83 and a half. He has never left me. He is Christ in me, the hope of glory. He is in me, the built-in repair, and he will be the same for you. Put your hand on the screen if you've never prayed this prayer or you need just to recommit. Say, Father, I know you love me. You have a wonderful plan for my life. I repent of all my sins. I have faith in the blood of Jesus who died and arose from the dead for me. Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. Hey, call right away and tell us about Jesus. Jesus. 